All right, hello everybody and welcome to this week's AEW Week in Review, weekly review thing that I still do not have a name for. However, we are talking about all things AEW this week, including Dynamite Rampage, not really Dark and Dark Elevation. However, we are going to talk about the announcement that Tony Khan is going to make about a new women's division signing who is going to face the Bunny in the first round of the Owen Hart Tournament. So I'm excited to get into that. Ricky Stark, Swerve Scott, CM Punk is back, MJF, Wardlow, so much to get into. Dax Harwood in singles action and great singles action. So we are going to talk about all things AEW right after this. Came to AEW to dominate. Jungle Boy Jeff Perry. Nobody is gonna take this away from me. This is mine once again. D. As always, you guys, I hope you have had a great week. I am happy to be here sitting in front of a microphone talking about AEW with you once again. That's for sure. It has been one. Heck of a hectic week, but a uh, heck of a hectic. It's been a heck of a hectic week, guys, and uh, and I really didn't get to finish Dynamite until about Friday. That's just how crazy things have been. But you are not here to hear about my wonderfully hectic, heck heck of a hectic life. Whatever I just said before, you're here to talk about wrestling. So let's get into this. I mean, and I want to start. I want to start with the man of the hour, the man of the week, the man of most weeks in uh, in AEW at least, or pro wrestling as a whole. MJF and this incredible segment with Wardlow. Every everything that needed to be addressed, you guys, was addressed. Like I had a couple little things that I don't think I even mentioned on this show, but just like nagging plot holes about I don't know, Wardlow the other week just being like, Well, I'm just gonna like not care and you know, I know I'm under contract, but screw that. I'm like, Well, that's not exactly how contracts work. And really that was one of the most interesting parts about this whole entire feud. So with all that being said, I was just like, How are they going to address that? And of course, MJF does exactly that. And then, of course, as always, MJF always, always on point with the verbiage. Not only did he say that, obviously, he and CM Punk's feud isn't over and there will be another match and he will give him his most embarrassing loss yet, which I believe, guys, by the way, like, that's... AEW plants those little seeds. Look at Hangman Page, Adam Cole... Excuse me, Hangman Page, Kenny Omega. The... Like, you gotta pay attention to those little hints, and my, I just always, I've said it a million times, I love when my, I'm treated like an intelligent wrestling fan, and I'm gonna hold on to that little detail, and maybe it doesn't turn into anything, but I would, I would bet that there is going to be another CM Punk MJF uh, match, and I bet that MJF is going to beat CM Punk and give him his most embarrassing loss. I don't know how that's gonna look, uh, maybe it's a title victory, maybe it's just... A very quick victory. Maybe it's just, again, another bloodbath, but we will have to wait and see. So that was really nice to tie that off with a little nice bow, but also just leave it a little bit open. Leaving the door just a creak open because we are not done there. And then, of course, he's talking about, you know, doing you know what on his grave and whatever else. And uh, and even better, in Texas, of course, we get some Jesus, tra- excuse me, Jesus chants. And, uh, and MJF claims that he's going to nail Wardlow on a cross, just like Jesus. So, MJF, just being as MJF as always, we have Methany Part 2, guys. And, and this was just a dynamite segment, for lack of a better term, for me. Of course, Wardlow coming out after MJF talking about how he's going to, if he, if he sees fit, kick that skank mom of Wardlow's out of her, um, out of his and her home. Jesus Christ, this this guy can almost get away with saying anything, and it's just the most brilliant character work. Uh, I don't know how he got to be at this level so quickly, but here we are, and I am loving every second of it. But yeah, I mean, Wardlow coming out, obviously, after after that line, and then not being beat up by a bunch of security guards, but instead held down, and uh, and having MJF, basically, I really thought it was a nice touch, like, like, MJF's words were going to do more damage than a bunch of security guards beating Wardlow up at that point were ever going to do. MJF's emotional, mental damage that he was going to do with his words was going to be so much worse than anything he could have come up with physically to Wardlow, especially to a guy as big as Wardlow. 
And then the sight of Wardlow being held by th- down by that many people put Wardlow over better than any other anything else they could have done would have would have put him over. I don't know if that made any sense. The security guards holding Wardlow down put Wardlow over better than anything MJF could have said to put him over. Because again, you want to put over your opponent, even if you need to bury them all at once. It's this weird nuance of pro wrestling. But I really thought this segment was just dynamite, a plus perfect. And I and I said. I said the other one didn't feel that hot. This one, MJF, of course, give him a microphone, and it's so hot. It is so hot, piping hot. This is the feud that I am probably most excited about right now in AEW. So all A pluses around for me. And um, and let's move on down. Let's talk about the man that MJF referenced earlier on. Let's talk about CM Punk returning in his match against Dax Harwood. And this match was a perfect example that AEW is just the like most perfect uh i can't think of another word i guess i need my thesaurus again guys but that AEW is just the most perfect buffet of all things pro wrestling we get like these nice worked like cm punk by the way just cm punk is the greatest seller right now and it's and it's not like dolph ziggler selling if that makes sense it's not just this over the top which again i'm all for it i love watching dolph ziggler get hit with a good you know spear power bomb anything that guy flops around like a fish, and it is wonderful to watch. But it's this idea that CM Punk is bringing back that some of these guys I hope really pick up on um, who get to wrestle him or have the privilege to wrestle him. He's selling stuff from weeks before, like from matches from weeks before, and, and a brutal match with MJF in a, uh, in a dog collar match. He's still selling it. Like, that's such a lost art. And I point you to see uh, Chris Jericho, who's somebody who you'd expect to be a little bit better about this but just isn't. Coming back from blood and guts so so quickly right after um right after yeah right after blood and guts and and just in a week later he's there with an arm cast sure but really selling this terrible like not even selling this terrible fall that looked awful production wise so I don't know I, I thought CM Punk was really 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 incredible in this match selling wise and it was slow but also didn't give you a chance to like you know, want to go look at your phone or go and get something to eat if you were in the stands. I, I don't know if you were in the stands and you get you did go do that. Power to you, but I would never, I would never be going to do that. And then I say that, and then at Grand Slam, I did. I was totally getting something to eat when CM Punk's match on Rampage started. But anyways, nonetheless, guys, I really, I really, really enjoyed this. It was good to see CM Punk back. I was distracted. I will not lie, by the damn tights, guys. He's got to, I just, he's got to get rid of him. He's got to get rid of the tights for me. It just doesn't work. It, it makes him look so old. Ugh, it's the worst. But Dax Harwood, too, always, always impresses in singles competitors, or as a singles competitor. I, these guys, I know they love tag team wrestling, but, like, I don't know. And I never, I never advocate for them to break up because Dax coming, excuse me, Cash coming out and uh, really cheering on Dax Harwood was really awesome. You can see the baby face coming. You can see Bret Hart coming as the manager with the sharpshooter as a nice tease. And a bunch of underlying Bret Hart just all throughout this match. And uh, But yeah, these guys are such good singles competitors as well. Particularly Dax Harwood that I I would really like to see a singles run from both of these guys as well. So I'm not, I'm not advocating at all for the FTR breakup. But I would like to see them branch out and do a little bit of both. Why can't they be tag team wrestlers and singles competitors? Uh, speaking of tag team, I'm going to just run with the transition now. Speaking with tag team wrestlers that are also singles competitors, let's talk about Brian Danielson and John Moxley because every week this just keeps getting better and better to me. I will say that I thought this match I enjoyed a lot more than I enjoyed the match last week. I don't know if it's just subjectively because I enjoy for some sick reason watching Brian Pillman Jr. just get the living bejesus beat out of him. And you know what, guys? I've said it before. I'll say it again. I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna apologize for that one. I'm not gonna apologize. I'm not, I'm not ashamed of that. Uh, but yes, I don't know if it has anything to do with that. I don't know uh, if it was just the fact that this match was a little bit quicker. I think last week's story with Wheeler Yuta was really awesome. Don't get me wrong, but I think this one was a lot more simple of just getting across the fact that John Moxley is just a part, just as much a part of this group and this faction as Brian Danielson is. I know I feel like a lot of the focus has been around William Regal and Brian Danielson's relationship with William Regal. However, we have not really been giving John Moxley the shine that he is. I mean, he is a former world champion, one of four AEW world champions, right? So he's kind of a big deal. I'm sure you guys know that. So I felt like we weren't giving John Moxley enough shine. And you know what? What did we do this week? We gave him all the shine he needed. Awesome promo, I thought. 
what a cool name too, the Blackpool Combat Club. Like I, I don't, I know nothing about England, but that sounds badass to me. Uh, so I'm all for it, and I was really like, I really just enjoyed this. I thought this was a lot better, a lot better as a viewing experience than last week. So I'm all for that, and um, and let's move on. Let's keep talking about tag team action, I guess, and go to that eight man tornado tag team match, guys. Not much to analyze about this. It was awesome. Uh, the Butcher just absolutely beating the you-know-what out of Darby Allen. I'll never get sick of it. Darby Allen is a maniac, you guys. The man is a maniac. He enjoys being thrown down stuff. I'm convinced. It's just, it's like, it's his thing. And you know what? We don't kink shame here on the unofficial WWE podcast. So you know what, Darby Allen? Whatever your thing is, we support you here. But yeah, this man is an absolute lunatic. He just needs to be thrown down stuff in order to be okay with his life, apparently. Or get railed into stuff. And I mean, this match started out hot as hell. We, we, you guys saw it. And if you didn't, you're a lunatic and go watch it now. But uh, we saw Darby Allen starting off the match with just an insane suicide dive. I just want to call it like uh, just like shooting out of a missile. The man is a rocket every single time. And then obviously we had the spots with Jeff Hardy doing the swanton bomb. It looked a little rough. It looked like he landed on the butcher and the blade's legs, but. I'm not I'm not here to complain as long as everybody was okay. I'm okay with it. We had the double um what I'm side effect. I was about to forget what it was called. The double side effect to Matt Hardy through the tables off the stage. This was kind of a spot fest. I mean Sting is jumping off stuff. And yeah, there was a little botch at the end, but honestly guys, I thought they played it off okay. It didn't really bother me. Sometimes in wrestling and, and I'm going to talk about this, I think, at some of the Rampage uh, matches this week. But sometimes in pro wrestling, I feel like if you can make the botch look like a struggle, it ends up helping it a lot more. And that's kind of what Sting made it just look like. Like like a struggle. Like, yeah, these guys, it, everything shouldn't be so perfect and flowy. Like, there should be a little grimy, a little back and forth, a little struggle. Because this is that you're wrestling another person, supposedly, right? You're in a fight with another person. It's not going to be like this perfect dance all the time. So I really enjoyed this overall. This was just a fun viewing experience. And I think I think we're going to get the match between Andrade and Darby Allen, obviously. And then maybe we get maybe we get some singles matches here and there. But it looks like the Hardy Boys are just kind of here to do some crazy stuff and some tag team stuff. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to them and the Young Bucks. No Young Bucks this week. I don't know. Um, I guess the Young Bucks had off this week. But I'm excited to see when the Hardy Boys eventually, because that's bound to happen. We all know. We all see that one coming from a mile away. So I'm excited for that as well. And, yeah, nothing but just fun to say about this. The You know what? The Butcher, guys, is like my, my MVP, my AEW MVP for the week. Uh, I know that includes technically Rampage last week, but still, I thought the guy was really, really awesome in that match. And then here again, so uh, overall, fun, just not much to analyze here, just fun wrestling uh, to watch. So, all right, we went over MJF, we went over uh, the Varsity Blondes and Brian Danielson. Let's talk about Jay Lethal versus Adam Cole, because we're going to move on really quickly from this one. Uh, I couldn't care less about this match, guys. I know it was kind of really just a match to lead to the post-match, so let's really just talk about that. But for the most part, you know, there were some cool spots back and forth. It's it's hard for me to get emotionally invested in anything Jay Lethal does. I say it every time on this podcast, but it bears repeating. Uh, sometimes it's just, sometimes you just can't block out what's going on outside the wrestling ring with some of these guys. And, and I um I wish I could to better be able to talk about some of this stuff, but I it's just it's not for me. So... But yeah, I mean, this wasn't anything too new. I, I, the only thing I'll say about this is is I understand the whole low blow is like Adam Cole's new finisher, it seems like. But Adam Cole and Jay Lethal, Jay Lethal, like I, this, this mismatch was too 50-50 for me, I think. If you're establishing Adam Cole as this threat to the title, you need to do a better job than having him have to cheat to win to beat Jay Lethal of all people. So that's all I really have to say about it. But post-match... Uh, interesting enough, Dark Order was nowhere to be found. Instead, Hangman Page came out, started whipping people with the belt, and now Adam Cole, long story go away, ends up stealing the belt, hitting him with a low blow, stealing the belt, and uh, Jurassic Express come out to make the save, but no Dark Order. So I don't know why they're separating Hangman Page and the Dark Order, but I'm, I'm interested nonetheless. I don't know where they would really go with that. You always got to be careful with any of that stuff, but... Um, but yeah, Adam Cole seems to be stealing belts is exactly what he seemed to do on uh, Rampage as well, stealing the tag team titles from Jurassic Express, who came out to make the save when Red Dragon beat uh, the Dark Order 10 and Alan Angels in a tag team match 
Uh, so I guess we'll move on to that. We'll talk about that briefly. I, I didn't think that was anything special. I think I think immediately when you take away entrances from wrestlers, it, it puts them already at a disadvantage for the match quality or at least the importance of the match. This didn't feel important at all, but I will say that the, the actual wrestling itself was great. I think it definitely uh, got you know, defeated a little bit by the commercial break, but I'll, I'm into watching specifically Bobby Fish. I really think watching Bobby Fish and, and now Kyle O'Reilly too, their striking is just a different change of pace as the buffet that is AEW Pro Wrestling. So with all that being said, I, I did like the match. And you know what? Let's move on down. Let's stick with the Rampage here and move on down and talk about Nyla Rose versus, I think it was Maddie Renkowski was her name. And uh, yeah, this was... Like a two-second squash match. And you know what, guys? Nyla Rose is awesome. And uh, and I guess we should talk about the Thunder Rosa thing, too, now. Nyla Rose is is really an awesome hand. And she's also somebody who's, like... I, I don't know why they don't do more with Nyla Rose. She's great on the microphone, I think. She's kind of like... She's a popper. Like, she is hilarious. If you follow her on Twitter, she's great. She's just got good banter. Like, she's just a, a all-around funny charming on the microphone I understand she's got to be a heel so she's good at that too and then she's great in the ring like really really awesome in the ring I don't know why they don't do more with her I, I don't know why we don't see more of her we only it seems like the only time we ever see anything with Nyla Rose is when either it's a vlog squad with Sammy Guevara or it's oh and we're going to talk about that don't you worry or it's to be the first challenger for a new champion. And, um, yeah, this was terrible last time with uh, Britt Baker and the burger thing. And it's terrible this time, too. And uh, and I would have been totally cool with this squash match if it wasn't so, so blatantly obvious what they were doing here. Okay, she's the first challenger, so we have to put her on TV, TV again. And so we're going to have her do the squash match. And this is the only women's match that's going to happen on Rampage. And it's good because it's our easy cop-out women's match. So we can say we had a women's match even though we really didn't have a women's match because it was two seconds. If they put another women's match on here, fine. Where's Serena Deeb's challenge? What happened to that? I know her car, Sheeta came back and then they just... Nothing. Nothing to follow up with that this week. So I don't know, guys. I, I was really disappointed in this. And um, and I was really disappointed in the whole beatdown with um, Thunder Rosa. Like, what, going after the fact that she's, like, an illegal immigrant? What are we? We the people? Like, go home, Vicky Guerrero, and your, your I can't even remember his name right now. What was it? Zeb Coulter ass. Like, I, I'm so, so not about the storyline. And so Nyla Rose and Thunder Rosa bo- both deserve better. In fact, guys, what do you know? The AEW women's division deserves better. So disappointing nonetheless but it was good to see Nyla Rose in the ring again so I will take the high from that uh the hook the uh hook and QT Marshall segment awesome that's all I gotta say about that hook is awesome and you know what it was the way he slammed Aaron Solo's face into that thing too I don't know how he got such a good like smash on that but it really was it was it was Probably the highlight of, of Rampage for me. Quick to the point, good. I'm all about it. But give me more hook wrestling. I know they have to be careful because they can't have him move up too much in the rankings. But I'm still, uh, I want to see more hook on my TV. So, uh, all right, let's move back on over to Red Velvet versus Layla Hirsch. Let's stick with the women's division here. Yeah, um, this was disappointing in the fact that the crowd just, I think, I think this was kind of lazy booking again. Like we just did the same exact match that we just did. You never see them do this with the men's division, except you know what? I say that and all, and we're running Adam Cole back with Hangman page. And I don't know why, because that feud to me just doesn't seem hot anymore at all. But nonetheless, uh, this apparently didn't seem that hot to the crowd either. And you know, I thought this was one of uh, red velvet, particularly Layla Hurst too, but really one of red velvet's best showings and disappointing that, I don't know, guys. Again, I, I I can only talk about it so many times that here we are again, and and they're in the same slot on the show, and it's clear that AEW doesn't give a crap about women's wrestling. And I'm just gonna move on because why why am I spending my time talking about it? So, uh, this Sammy Guevara segment that was next with uh, Dan Lambert and <laughs> Ty Conti and and uh, Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky. I'm not. I'm not sure you guys, I'm not sure I'm ready for this one. I'm not sure if you guys are ready to talk about this one either. Uh, Sammy Guevara and Ty Conti. If you guys are on the Twitter, which by the way, if you are on the Twitter and you don't follow me, it's at Mimi Burris. You can give me a follow. You can also follow uh, the whole WWE podcast family here. It's at wrestling underscore audio, A-U-D-I-O. Did I spell that right? A-U-D-I-O. Okay, just making sure. 
Um, I don't know why I was I was about to start singing the farm song after that one. Okay, so yes, you can follow us at wrestling underscore audio, and then you can follow me at Mimi Burris. And but anyways, on the tweeter, on the tweeter, Sammy Guevara and Ty Conti are really displaying their love. And you know what? I don't know if you guys have been out there. You've been in a new relationship, and you're excited about it, and you're happy about it, and you just want to tell the whole freaking world. And you know what? Power to them. Power to the both of them. They are both good-looking, attractive human beings, young, good-looking people who, yes, are very photogenic and good for them. Good for and happy about their and active and active in multiple areas of their lives. Let's just put it that way here. Keep it PG. Keep it PG on the WWE podcast. But uh, yeah, so they are rubbing it in everybody's face ever is kind of how it comes ac- across. And I'm, I'm somebody who's, I'd like to say, in a fairly happy relationship. And I've been with my partner for a while now. And, and, and it still feels like it's getting rubbed in my face somehow, some way. And you know what it is? It's because it's like natural human nature to be jealous of like the good looking human beings that are happy in a relationship. It just kind of is. And so really, I, I don't know why they continue to put Dan Lambert against people like Sammy Guevara now, or it was Brandy Rhodes or whoever it was, and try to make, like, who, like, who's the heel and who's the baby face in here? Am I supposed to be cheering for the guy who's talking about uh, calling uh, Ty Conti lucha or am I supposed to be cheering for the guy who's talking about how he's freaking ejaculating on, uh, the TNT title, the great Brody Lee, the title that rep- represents the late great Brody Lee, and he is ejaculating on it, and that's that's what he's referring to, uh, and 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 many other things that I'm again we're keeping we're trying to keep it somewhat PG here on this podcast, but Sammy Guevara is not making it easy for us. Like, who am I supposed to be cheering for in this feud? And Paige Van Zant is. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. She's probably way beyond whatever she's doing on her OnlyFans page. By the way, power to her. 1099. Go wild. OnlyFans. She's a beautiful woman. If she, the, You know what? She's an entrepreneur. Go wild. But it's just like we're talking about she's a legit combat fighter. She could probably kick the crap out of Dan Lambert. And th- that's that's what he has to do to like hype her up is talk about that. I'm so sick of this guy on my television. And I don't think it's just his fault. It is partially his fault because he's so... Just a misogynist, like, you don't get to play a racist, misogynistic, whatever, and, and it doesn't work in the, in the context that they're trying to continue to put it in. It really doesn't work at all, but some people will argue that it does, and you know what, if they want to argue, these are mostly bad faith people, but if they want to argue that it does, that's fine. But it has to be in a certain circumstance, and this is not the circumstance, and the Brandy Rhodes feud was not the circumstance either. So I'm about sick and tired of this. I don't know about you guys, but I've had pretty much enough of Dan Lambert versus insert baby face that comes off like a heel. Uh, And I really think that, you know, again, happy for you, Ty Conti. Happy for you, Sammy Guevara. Enjoy your young, attractive human being love that you are, you know, into right now and enthralled in. Don't talk about it on the TNT title please and uh you know that for again a title that is holds so much prestige in this company for a very uh I'm not the only one who's pointing this out by the way on Twitter uh, on the Twitter right AE, other AEW wrestlers so ter- I would turn Sammy Guevara heel and Ty Conti heel I'd take them as far away as they can from this I thought they were going to turn heel here for a minute actually uh and then it didn't it swerved in a different direction but speaking of Speaking of swerving in a different direction, let's talk about the main event that was Rampage. Because, guys, oh my gosh, did these guys kick the living crap out of each other. Some of those knees from Swerve just look like... I- I'm still shivering, and I watched it like 24 hours ago. That's not true. It was less than that, but still, don't judge me. I don't have a lot of time. But, yes, yeah, some of those knees, oh my god, and the kicks to the face. I, If I was Ricky Stark, I thought Ricky Stark was going to start like shooting and throwing hands because it looked so stiff and so rough. And I have to say, Ricky Starks has the best finisher in pro wrestling. The Rochambeau, I love the name, and I love the maneuver itself. Again, subjectively, of course, but you know what? What's, um... As I'm rambling really on, I haven't had any, I haven't even had any coffee today, guys. This is just nat- all natural, fast talking. <laughs> um, what is your guys' favorite finisher in professional wrestling right now? Uh, name, who does it, all the, all the, uh, all the like. I like the V-trigger, too, but I don't think that's really a finisher, and it's not nearly up there. I love 
the Buckshot Lariat as well. I have to throw that out there too. But the Rochambeau takes the cake for right now. And yeah, that's exactly how um, Ricky Starks got the win here in the end after a really awesome main event and a really good back and forth before the main event with uh, Mark Henry essentially being like, Dad, kids, your dad is speaking. It's time for the main event. It's look like, it looks like we've had enough talk. Shut up. Go wrestle. Uh, really, again, I like I love that little segment they do beforehand. I think it adds a lot. So, And it makes a distinction between Rampage and Dynamite. And I think it adds a little something to uh, Rampage that Dynamite doesn't have. And I think that's important because Rampage is clearly like the B show here. The way I wouldn't even say it's the B show. I would say like it's the C show and there is no B show because it's the 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 difference of importance is huge. Absolutely. But um, yeah. And then obviously Will Hobbs, who had the who just trucked, just trucked swerve. And that's how obviously Ricky, uh, Ricky Starks got the win. Goes in the ring. They're going to beat down Swerve a little bit. And then, uh, excuse me, Keith Lee throws one of his little, uh, Ricky Starks' little entourage, which was a great touch, by the way. Uh, throws one of Ricky Starks' entourage through the little paper thing. Shows, looks like he's about to eat Ricky Starks and Will Hobbs all together. A great brawl to end the show. I love that. I feel like they do that just enough. I was going to say they should do that more often, but they shouldn't. They do it just enough. So good, guys. It's just, it adds such a realness to the show. I, this was one of my favorite episodes of Rampage, except for the fact that the women's division gets no treatment, but the at least for the men's division, I thought this was such an awesome way to end the show. And I thought commentary overall, all show was pretty good too. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of love hating the whole Chris Jericho influencer crap. And, uh, and Taz is just wonderful. Taz is, I love frustrated Taz. It's just the best thing in this company. So, and last but not least, guys, let's go over, speaking of Chris Jericho, to the main event of Dynamite, which was the Jericho Appreciation Society Appreciation Society uh, versus John Silver and Alex Reynolds of the Dark Order. Easy for me to say. Yeah, I, um, I, I don't know why this was the main event. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't think it was worthy of being the main event, and I don't feel like I've heard enough people talk about that. Uh... I don't know. I, there's so many stars on this show, and Chris Jericho and uh, Daniel Garcia versus two guys from the Dark Order. And don't get me wrong, you guys know I love John Silver, and Alex Reynolds is super talented, and John Silver is so over. But was this main event material? I think it's. You know what I think it is? I think it's not just this one show, but I think this is like a build up frustration of me for most shows. I feel like. AEW really doesn't treat its main event as the top spot. It treats its first match as the top spot. And um, and if they're going to do that, that's fine. They got to just uh, lean forward with that. But stop calling this stuff the main event because it's not. You might as well put the women's division match on last at this point uh, with how little they seem to care about the main event slot. So, yeah. Anyways. Uh, I thought this was really fun. I, I do think it went... It didn't even go a little long. It just... I think the commercial breaks were really kind of dampened this match for me. Just a bit. But watching Johnny Hungy, John Silver do his fire-up spot was awesome. And at the finish of the match with the uh, bat to Alex Reynolds and then um, the roll-up... Or excuse me, not roll-up. Just the finish from uh, Daniel Garcia getting the pin I thought was a really great touch and a really great ending to a match. Chris Jericho has still got this whole thing down when he wants it. And, and, and he looks great, guys. The guy looks great. Again, he looks great for a 50-year-old man. Let's, you know, call a spade a spade here. But a hair, everything, power to him for just getting his stuff back together. And and, um, and Jake Hager looks awesome, too. Last thing I will say, the former 2.0, right? I can't daddy magic. I'm not a cool hands Ange, daddy magic. My, I'm not even going there. Um, are awesome and such an, a beautiful, beautiful, like, uh, addition to this act. I love... Love how they got uh uh the other part. I'm blanking on who it was. The other people from the Dark Order kicked out of the match, saying that they threw him into the uh, steel steps. I thought that was really awesome, and the white gear is incredible too. So, all in all, guys, I really enjoyed this week in Dynamite. I like I can't complain, and I know it sounds. I feel like we're going off on a little bit of a neutral note, but. I really did enjoy this week, and there was some really, really awesome stuff, especially that Rampage main event. I really wish they put that as the Dynamite main event. That would have felt like a bigger main event than this. But um, with all that being said, guys, thank you. I know the show is a little shorter than usual, and we'll be back here uh, next week to talk about the whole thing. Maybe we'll do a Dynamite review. Maybe we'll do another Week in Review. I'll keep it as a surprise, but it sounds like we might just we might just fall into a Week in Review kind of vibe here, and this works better with my schedule too, so... 
With all that being said, guys, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week, and I cannot wait to get back here and talk about wrestling with you guys next week. So I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks for listening to the WWE Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss a show. Or head to wwepodcast.com. And for all of these shows ad-free, head over to patreon.com slash WWE Podcast. Until then, we'll see you next time.